Even when you think you know it all and you have all the answers and you've proven that they work, you still make mistakes on a low carb keto carnivore diet. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another low carb keto carnivore chat. And again, I may have technical issues with my, my video production here. I'm working through it. I, I need to produce videos uh, three times a week and um, it may be out of focus. The green screen may be messed up. I'm working out the details. I just don't have time to, there's no instruction manual on my set of equipment on how to do this properly. But anyway, I want to talk about uh, the low carb life. I think I have most of the answers and I, and I feel very much in control of my diet and my health um, when it comes to body composition and, and food consumption and liquid consumption. Um, but I make mistakes and we're all human and you know we, we're obviously not perfectionists and we can't score a hundred percent on every life test thrown our way. So in this case, I want to talk about some of the mistakes I made and I think it's good to get them out in the open. Um, I'll tell you what mistakes I don't make anymore. I don't eat bread. I don't eat uh, any, really anything um, bad for you, <laughs> uh, like fast food or anything like that. I, I've really stayed away from it and my, my weight is steadily getting better and better and better and better. Uh, I may hit some plateaus. Uh, every now and then down the road, but uh, I'm doing okay. And I, I, but here, let me talk about some of the mistakes I've made. Now, alcohol, I've uh, pretty much switched directly to uh, the, the, not, the low carb seltzers. Those I found are the least problematic. And I think eventually drinking should be wiped out completely. Honestly, uh, it, it's, uh, there's really no benefit, but I, that, I'm working on one thing at a time here, and that's a pretty lame excuse, but. The other day I had a craving for beer and obviously I, I think I mentioned that there's three different kinds of buzzes I've been able to identify with alcohol consumption and that's the, the happy buzz you get from a beer and it's a very quick hit and buzz. The first beer I always feel a buzz and then there's the angry uh, buzz that you get from the hard liquor in my opinion at least. You, you're fine and then all of a sudden you hit a wall. The, the hard liquor just hits you pretty damn fast and I don't like that anymore. That's why I rarely I add a splash of vodka to some of my drinks occasionally to, to raise the octane. But And then there's wine which was for a long time the best of uh, both worlds. It was a pretty decent buzz. I wasn't like jumping jumping for joy, uh, but I also wasn't angry and it was a good buzz until I found out that I just didn't like that the impurities in wine and after years of drinking wine I said no and that's why but uh, I switched I bought a four pack of Guinness uh, beer the other day and I, I sucked them down like really fast I think four beers in an hour and I, I really enjoy I missed the, the the sensation of beer but I, I don't feel good drinking wheat based beer and I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to stay with my uh, my seltzers. Those always uh, have proven to be rock solid. And another thing that I'm finding out now, uh, and these are mistakes I'm making and I'm discovering via experience, regardless of what the package says, I think almost all packaged food, anything meant to be stable on the shelf for more than a day is just not good for you. Um, uh, case in point, I had some nitro uh, coffee, uh, cold brew nitro coffee. And again, it said oh, it was all natural, but I felt like crap. And almost any time I eat a packaged good of some kind that is meant, it's either vacuum sealed or in a can or a bag or a box, I don't feel good. So I'm really going to pretty much uh, try my best to, to bat a thousand on not eating any packaged foods. I guess some exceptions I might make are maybe a, a spice pack for a chili or something like that. But even then, you never know. They put all sorts of additives and anti-caking agents in them. So I think uh, the spices and flavorings, I'm, I'm slowly phasing out and just eating the raw, the raw, just basic one ingredient plus uh, sea salt foods. And here's another thing. I guess this falls under the packaged foods category. It's uh, nuts of any kind. Um, Peanuts are, are some of the worst things. I, I don't really eat peanuts anymore. Peanuts were, uh, they're, they're, I think they're a little inflammatory and, and you end up eating too many of them. They're very addictive. They, you can't just eat a couple. Um, and then I switched over to like cashews and almonds were, were also a good, uh, 
are a good choice. I like toasting the almonds. I, I, I toss them in uh, coconut oil and I put a heaping amount of sea salt and I toast them until they're brown. And that, that, that's a really good snack. I may keep that one in the rotation. But pistachios in particular, I, I found myself in the last uh, two months, I think I bought maybe three bags of them. And they were gone in short order, a week or less that I find myself just eating them. And you, you just open up the shells, open up the shells, and they just you just can't stop eating them. And then maybe it's because I think I got one that was more than just salted. It was salt and pepper. But whatever the case is, if you find yourself eating almost mindlessly and nonstop, then there's something wrong with them. So, And they say uh, macadamias are not nuts. There's some other kind of uh, you know, process, uh, category. But I'm not a really big fan of macadamias. And those are very high in fat and good, and they do satiate you. So maybe in the future I'll buy a little thing of macadamias to keep on hand. You pop like one or two, and that's good enough, and usually satiates you if you're hungry. But luckily, if you're doing low-carb keto carnivore right, you really rarely are uh, that raging hunger. Um, and lastly, uh, sweets in general. I've mentioned this many times in the past, and I'm gonna mention it more times in the future. But I think sweets, uh, just the sweet sensation is not something you want to put in your mouth because it changes. It changes your whole mindset and everything that's going on. It like sends a shock to your, your nervous system. And even if it's uh, xylitol or erythritol or monk fruit, I think that the sweet sensation is something that should be avoided. And it always sends me for a loop. So I'm, I'm, I've been experimenting with uh, low carb uh, like uh, erythritol ice cream that I make with heavy cream and few drops of vanilla, maybe I'll throw a handful of strawberries in or, or something. And it, it never tastes as good as the old ice cream did back in the day and, and you end up eating a lot of it. it it's a really, really tough nut to crack. I'm, I'm almost done cracking the nut. Uh, but I think sweets, the short term benefit does not outweigh what happens afterward cumulatively. So I, I think they're just going to be gone. So the, my whole point is like, even though we know what is good for us and what isn't, uh, we still make these mistakes. And, I, and I'm not, I don't feel guilty or remorseful about making those mistakes. I think uh, experience is a much greater teacher than reading about them. Whether it's, you know, you read about it and you put it to the test and you vet out your theories or you just uh, act like a human being and, and you make mistakes and that furthers like I knew that a lot of these things that I ate and drank were not good for me, but I, 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 I became weak or I uh, just uh, slipped up for a minute, didn't think it was going to be a big deal. But then when you realize you feel what happened when you make those mistakes, you're uh, less likely to make the mistakes again in the future because there certainly wasn't any upside benefit to the mistakes I made. It's not like, oh man, that was such a good mistake I make. I think I'm going to make it again. No, I wouldn't be making this video if that was the case. I wouldn't tell anybody. I would just make the mistakes and go fail somewhere uh, far out of, uh, out of sight. So that's it. I, I really think that, uh, and I'm sure I'll, I'll come back in a couple months with more mistakes that I can discover or that I'll make by accident. I'm not certainly not trying to make any mistakes at all, but uh, you know, the alcohol is going to be the next one. Once we've really, really cracked it, maybe in about a year, I'm going to start uh, the, the getting rid of the alcohol all together. So have a good week ahead, and I hope your low-carb keto carnivore journey goes smooth. Mm -hmm.